Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is my third review. The SRC M16A4. Um, some of the complications I've seen. Um, I've had um, a gentleman on some of my videos ask, uh, how are the internals? So this will explain the quality of those. The hop-up system uh, is made out of aluminum. The gears on the side are also, or not also, I said the, ge the gears on the side are plastic. Moving to the gear box, um, I took that apart totally, um, and I found some interesting stuff. Um, first of all, the quality is excellent, um, very heavy duty, um, stuff seems that it won't break on me, even if you dry fire, though I do not recommend you do dry fire, try to bring that down to a minimal, I know it's hard that when you run out of BBs, that you do dry fire, that's to be expected. But if you do dry fire once here and there, it won't crack your case. Um, uh, so overall, the internals on your gearbox are great. Now to the upper receiver, some things I found that were kind of disturbing about this model. Um, with the this this certain um, um, type of gun, or at least the M16, usually when you have your upper receiver, you pull out the back pin and it'll slide forward, upward, and you can work from your internals from there. This gun doesn't do that. Um, the upper receiver um, to to work on the upper receiver without the customizations that I've done to my gun, some filing down um, that I'll explain later. To get to your externals, what you would have to do is um, unscrew here, which gets to your motor. You'd have to uh, take out your motor, um, unscrew your handle, take out the back pin, your uh, pin here, and then your pin here. Um, unscrew here that connects to your gearbox, the rear of your gearbox, and finally, then you pull the gearbox out and you can work from there. Very, very complicated, unnecessary for the SRC to do that. Um, and the, the issue arise is because of the design of their upper receiver and how. Um, how it's how snugly it fits around your uh, gearbox, where um, you now with through the customizations, I can now slide the upper receiver all the way out. Um, now the modif modifications I did were, if you notice right here, I filed from here to here. And there is a piece of aluminum side that extended all the way to here at about that height. So I sanded that down, which gives me access to slide it out. But that's not the only modification you have to do if you want to make your gun slide out. With your lower receiver. Oh, pop on that. All right. <laughs> right here, the bridge um, was way too high. Sorry, I got way too high for the hopper, the hop up to slide out. So I had to file that down um, to make that to work. And now it does. I've tested it out, and it it works. Some disappointments on the upper receiver is the thinness of some parts of 
the receiver is right here where you put your pins in to connect to your gearbox and to your flow receiver are way too thin. They may they need to make it a couple centimeters um, thicker so it doesn't break. On this side, it didn't have reinforcement siding um, and therefore through some force um, I accidentally broke it. I never recommend forcing any of your internals and externals on your airsoft gun. In my case it did break unfortunately. Fortunately I have JB Weld um, and hopefully that will keep it together. I'm expecting it after it dries. I'm going to sand it um, to the same specifications on the other side so it'll have the same dimensions um, and it should work fine. Also, the charging handle um, and the, the little uh, side catch for your duster um, is made, this part right here is made out of ABS plastic. Not the best plastic, but not the worst. Um, it broke off about right there. Um, and so I also, again, had to JB weld it. And I'm letting that dry also. Other than that, the, the charging handle is made out of um, steel. Um, it has a good weight to it. And there's the spring. Um, I will make another video of this coming up soon of how the gun works and whatnot. Um, so stay tuned and watch that when I get that posted up. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Talk to you later. Bye.